Recreational Vessel Electrical and Electronics Systems is brought to you by Sailing Toucan and narrated by Captain Farmer. Captain and Mate Farmer have extensive experience both recreational and commercial, inland and offshore. We are currently refurbishing and upgrading a 29 foot by 19 foot Catalina sailboat for extended cruising. This video will cover AC and DC power aboard as well as the most common electronic systems and networks. Shore power connectors are sized so it's not possible to plug into the wrong supply. Smaller boats typically use a single 30 amp service and larger boats usually have two 30 amp service cables fed by one 30 50 amp splitter. This presentation will cover Canada, United States, and the Caribbean area, but not EU countries that use 230 volt AC at 50 cycles. You must have a primary master AC shore power breaker within three feet of the shore power connector and ahead of your AC control panel. Make sure you know where it is and how to use it. If you have a generator aboard, you'll have an AC source selector that prevents you from accidentally connecting your generator to shore power. You need some form of AC galvanic isolation. An isolation transformer is the best, but they are very heavy and very expensive. Most boats will have an electrical galvanic isolator. AC wiring color code is black for hot, white for neutral return, and green or green-yellow for the green wire safety ground. Use ground fault receptacles only and check them with a wood head tester. DC power board is supplied from a battery bank referred to as your house batteries. Boats over 50 or 60 feet are beginning to use 24 volt systems for high current loads to reduce the current and wire sizes. Don't leave your 1-2 all battery switch in the all position as one bad battery can discharge a different good battery. How much DC power you need is based on your expected loads plus a safety margin. Build a spreadsheet like this to capture all of your loads in terms of amp hours per day. You cannot discharge standard deep cycle batteries past 50% without damaging them and shortening their life. At the dock with shore power or with your generator running, you need a modern multi-level battery charger rated for the type of batteries that you are using. With your iron wind running to heat water or for propulsion, your engine mounted alternator can charge your batteries. Solar panels are coming down in price and going up in efficiency. Quoted outputs are often optimistic as sun angle, shadows will affect the output. It's possible to generate small amounts of AC from inverters, but they literally inhale battery power. 
do your homework and calculate realistically before purchasing an inverter. AC generators can generate reasonable amounts of AC, but they consume additional fuel, require maintenance, and are sometimes noisy. Always use stranded, tinned, marine grade wire only. Run hot and ground to each DC device. Size the wire for twice the length of the run. Size critical loads for less than 3% loss. Less critical loads can be sized for 10% loss. Heat shrink connectors are suggested to reduce corrosion. Crimp connectors with professional crimpers only. These are the current standard marine wire color codes. Older boats may not always comply with all of these colors. If you wire the automatic float switch side of your bilge pump with a low loss diode as shown, you can get an alarm if you develop a leak while you're in your bunk. VHF radios are the primary means of communication aboard. You should monitor channel 16 at all times. You can usually contact commercial vessels on 13 as they watch both 16 and 13. Some newer VHF radios have receive only AIS included so you can see them, but they can't see you. Be sure to get and install a Marine Mobile Service Identifier number. Dedicated chart plotters are best at the helm station, but tablets running OpenCPN software are also a good choice. Don't get hypnotized by the plotter to the point that you ignore other valid sources of information. OpenCPN chart plotting software is free and very comprehensive. It was developed and is maintained by serious ocean sailors. Commercial and larger recreational vessels transmit AIS location, course, speed, and identification information on VHF frequencies. You have to be transmitting for them to be able to see you. Here's an AISB transceiver for larger recreational vessels and in congested areas so other boats can see your information. Signal K consolidates many marine data formats like NEMA 183 or NEMA 2000 into a single format data source that can be accessed on mobile devices like tablets and smartphones. Open Plotter, a variant of OpenCPN, including Signal K, can run on an inexpensive and low current computer like the popular Raspberry Pi family of single board computers with up to 8 gigs of storage. For offshore cruising, some form of emergency position indicating radio beacon can significantly shorten the response time from the coasties. This was not Photoshop. This actually happened apparently in broad daylight on a vessel with radar but minus a proper lookout in August of 2020 in the Chesapeake Bay area. When operating at night or in very crowded harbors, radar is a big help once you learn to properly tune and use it. 
if you have it, it should be on, and the newer spread spectrum radars don't consume near as much DC current. Radar can also be used to locate severe weather, like the thunderstorm shown here. If caught in a storm, use your rain clutter adjustment to see other vessels and buoys. Devices aboard can communicate using NEMA 0183, a form of serial RS-232 communications. Wiring these devices can sometimes be trial and error. To connect a NEMA 183 GPS or AIS to your modern computer, you'll need a serial RS-232 to USB adapter. NEMA 2000 is a newer and more robust marine network that lets multiple devices communicate with each other, and it can show engine data, wind data, and other information aboard your boat. Some devices, like the FLIR thermal imaging cameras, use Ethernet cables for connections. Using Wi-Fi and tablets is less expensive than having multiple multifunction displays, but tablets may not be marine rated. Lightning protection is a very complex subject and specific to your particular boat. See the next slide for some general guidelines. Lightning grounding is a difficult subject. You typically want all metal parts bonded to a central, non-current carrying bonding system. If you bond metal through hulls, you can generate galvanic corrosion. It's best to have an expert review your particular boat configuration. If you're an offshore cruiser, don't neglect electronics for your dinghy and your emergency raft. If you hit a partially submerged container, it can do a lot of damage to your hull. Stay with the boat or near it if at all possible. It's much easier for the coasties to locate a hull. We hope you've enjoyed this introduction to vessel electrical and electronic systems. Please subscribe, like, and share so others can find these free instructional videos at Sailing Toucan River Navigation.